Though my ship's been battered, I know it cannot save. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God delivered Moses and led him safely through. Each day I hear him whisper, I'll do the same for you. Amen. Fear not, my child, for I will see you through. Amen. There's nothing yeah, in this world Amen. too hard for me to do. I delivered Daniel from the lion's den, raised Lazarus from the dead. I'm just the same. I'll never change are the words that Jesus said. My Lord gave comfort to old Job when the hour was dark. And he took care of Noah when he told him to build the ark. He went through the fiery furnace with the Hebrew three and when my soul is burdened down I hear him say to me fear not my child for I will see you through there's nothing in this world too hard for me to do I delivered Daniel from the lion's den, raised Lazarus from the dead. I'm just the same. I'll never change are the words that Jesus said. I'm glad that we ain't got to live in fear. That's right. Amen. I ain't talking about being cautious and concerned. But I'm glad I ain't afraid of what's going on. Because the Lord's moved in. Uh -huh. And the Bible talks about how that you and I as children of God, we ain't got to have that spirit of fear. That's right. Yeah. What a blessing. That's good. Well, the world's scared to That's death. Good. They don't know what's going on. on I'm not being I'm not meaning to be foolish and be unconcerned, but I'm glad that I ain't afraid. Yeah. Because I know whom I have believed. Yeah. Yeah. And if I was to die today, I know where I'm going. Yeah. What a blessing. Yeah. If you're here this morning and don't know what it is to be born again, Come on now. Uh, you're in a good place this morning. Yeah. Come on now. Indeed. So we thank the Lord for that. If you will, take your Bibles and turn with us to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 5. Genesis chapter number 5, and we'll give you what the Lord's laid on our heart for this morning. Genesis chapter number 5, and we'll begin reading in verse number 21. We invite you to stand if you're able. Verse number 21 of Genesis chapter number 5, the Bible says, Enoch lived sixty and five years, Beget Methuselah. Enoch walked with God after he beget Methuselah 300 years. And beget sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. We'll end our reading there and ask the Lord to help us this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, we want to say thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we have to be able to come to the house of God. Lord, I pray that you'd help us this morning as we preach the Word of God. Lord, we know our inability, we know our frailty, we know that we're just dust. So Lord, if anything is said this morning, it'll be because of you. And so Lord, we want to ask you that you would help us this morning as we preach the Word of God. Lord, I pray as the Word of God goes forth, Lord, it would be a blessing and encouragement to your people this morning. 
Lord, if someone sitting here don't know what it is to be uh, saved, born again, Lord, I pray that you'd speak to their heart this morning. Lord, we'll be sure to give you all the honor and all the glory. For it's in your name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Uh, now here in the Word of God, we find here in Genesis chapter number 5, uh, this man by the name of Enoch. And if you've been in church any length of time, uh, been in Sunday school, I remember as a boy uh, growing up in Sunday school and hearing uh, my teacher teach on Enoch. And Enoch is a uh, very uh, familiar character in the Word of God. Uh, we find Enoch, uh, when you look at him in the Word of God, in the uh, places where he's mentioned, you find him uh, mentioned in the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11. We find him mentioned in the book of Jude. And uh, when you think about Enoch and what uh, his life represented, what he uh, testified to, it's amazing at how even though there's not a lot said about this man, what is said, you and I can learn from as children of God. I'm glad that there's people who have lived a life in front of me, who have testified to me in uh, their life of how they lived, how they uh, lived for the Lord. And I was able to learn some things and was able to, to apply those uh, characteristics to my life. And how, what a blessing that has been. Yeah. I'm glad that we have people that we can look up to. That's right. And Enoch here is one that you and I, we can look up to as children of God. Yeah. We find in the book of Hebrews, it speaks of Enoch. The Bible says that he was a man who pleased God. Yeah. I'll ask you this morning who you please. That's right. What's your desire? Uh, who do you want to please? A lot of people in the day in which we live, they're more worried about pleasing uh, their fellow man rather than pleasing God. Uh, my friend, this morning, our ultimate desire as children of God should be to please the Lord Jesus. And uh, you think about that in the day in which we live, uh, that's very, very few and far between. But you and I, we should be people who want to please the Lord. That's right. But here in the text in which we've read, we find something else about Enoch. We find uh, this phrase, the Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Yes. And I got to thinking about what it is to walk with the Lord. Yeah. What it is to... Have a walk with God. And uh, this morning, in the day in which we live, uh, we're living around people uh, who like to say with their mouth, Oh, I walk with God. But the life in which they live is far from. That's right. And you and I, as children of God, uh, this morning, our desire not only to please God, but we should have a desire to want to walk with Him. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so many people today, if we're not careful, people's watching you and I. Yeah. They see, and, and the only Bible that they'll ever read is our life. Yeah. The only uh, thought of a, of a life changed for the Lord Jesus is what they're looking at in you and me. That's right. And so you and I, we should walk with God in the day in which we live. Yeah. And I got to thinking about Enoch here. The Bible says in verse number 21, and Enoch lived 60 and 5 years and begat Methuselah. Yeah. Then in verse number 22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. That's right. So we find in verse 21, for 65 years in Enoch's life, according to what we just read, Enoch didn't walk with God. It was not until after he begat 
Methuselah that he began walking uh -huh. with God. And I got to thinking about that. Did you know in life I didn't start walking till after I was born? Uh -huh. Now that's real deep. So you might have to help me with that, but shake your head and talk back to me. You didn't start walking till after you was born. Right. Is that right? Yes. It's the same way spiritually. Yes, that's right. Until after you've been born again yep. can you walk with God. That's right. Yes. Now we have people that say, oh I walk with God, but there's never been a birth in their life. That's right. That's right. I don't care how much you desire to want to walk with Him. If you've never been born again, you're not walking with God. Right. But I'm glad that this morning there's an opportunity. There's a, there's a place that you can come and get birth into the family of God and begin walking with God. Amen. Not only that, but I got to thinking about this in verse 22. The Bible says, And Enoch walked with God. It does not say that God walked with Enoch. But that Enoch walked with God. I got to thinking about that. You know, to walk with God you got to go the same direction he's going. That's right. You can't go your own direction when God is walking right. the way he's walking. That's right. That's right. To walk with God, you and I are going to have to go the direction in which he's going. That's right. Amen. And so, with that in mind and that kind of a foundation, for a few minutes this morning, I want to preach on what it is. To walk with God. Oh yes. First of all, I would bring to your attention this morning, this walking with God, I would like to say, it's an enjoyable walk. Yes, amen. When you think about it, as a boy, I remember walking with my mama and my daddy. Yeah. I re remember those times when they would hold my hand and I would walk with them. And since I've got married, I walk with my wife and, and the joy of being able just to walk by my wife. Yes. I've got children and I've held their hand as they've grown up yes. and walked with them. Yeah. But I have to say that I've never walked with anybody like the Lord. That's right. Yeah. And you'd have to be honest too. You'd say the same thing. Uh, that's right. I've never walked with somebody that knew me like he knows me. Amen. And yet, he still walks with me. Right. If you really knew Caleb Lindsay, you would leave right now. Bless your heart, Caleb. But probably if I really knew you, I'd walk out too. <laughs> but what a blessing this morning. Even though as wicked as sometimes this flesh that we live in is and can be, and yet he still walks with you and I. Yeah, That's a joy yeah. Yeah, yeah. to know that he knows all about me, and yet he still wants to fellowship Amen. with you and I. Amen. He would still make his presence known here this morning with you and I. What a joy that is. Amen. That he would still desire to walk with you and I. That's a joy. Yes, it is. You know, there's times in walking in life that there are problems and difficulties that you and I face. Uh -huh. And sometimes, because of how hard they are, because of some of the difficulties that weigh us down, yeah. sometimes it's hard to put into words and try to convey to others what you and I are going through in our walking 
with the Lord. That's right. But did you know, in my walking with him, he's never had a problem understanding what I was going through. Amen. Isn't that a joy this morning? Yeah. That even in those yeah. times when I couldn't make it into words as to what I was going through, the God of heaven that was walking with me, he knows all about it already. Right. And that's a joy. To know that God is willing to get up under our burden with us. Yeah. Willing to take our burden. Amen. And willing to carry it for you and I. That's right. We find over there in 1 Peter chapter number 5. Verse number 7. Casting all your care upon Him. For He careth for you. That's right. A lot of times though what we do. Is we'll bring our burden down here. Come on now. Preach right there. We'll come down and we'll talk to the Lord about it. Come on, Caleb. Yeah. And then we then we pick it back up. Yeah, that's right. And we go and sit back down. Sure. Amen. But he's a God this morning. You can leave it right here with him. That's right. You can go get in your car and drive home. Amen. Leave that burden right there with the Lord. Yeah, that's right. And the Lord Amen. take care of that. Yeah, problem. that's right. Yeah. Now sometimes he may take care of it in a way. And we, in a human mindset, we don't understand why he's doing it the way he's doing it. That's right. But that's the sovereignty of God. On, God has a reason in how he's taking care of our problems. Right. And it's all ultimately that he's going to get the glory for what's done Bless you, in our life. But what a joy this morning it is to know that we get to walk that's right. with yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Then not only that, but I got to thinking, not only is it an enjoyable walk, but I got to thinking about the Bible says, and the Enoch walked with God. I got to thinking about how it's an educating walk. Sure, Do you realize this morning, you can't walk with God and not learn something. That's right. That's right. That's true. Amen. That's right. It's amazing the God that created everything that you and I see in existence today. The place that we live on called Earth, the world, all the galaxies beyond places that we ain't never seen with our human eyeball. And yet God created it all. That's right. That's and right. you and I are going to walk with Him. He's going, to lead, he's going to teach you something sure, hey, in your walk. Yeah. What a blessing this morning that God wants to teach you and I something. Yeah. Now, I'm not against going to school trying to learn. What a blessing. I'm not against trying to get books. I've got books I try to read, try to learn. I'm not against getting under somebody and try to learn from them about the Word of God or, or whatever it may be. That's a blessing this morning. But I will say this. There are some things that man cannot teach you. That's right. Amen. You're right. No matter how hard they may try, there's some things man cannot teach you. I got to thinking about what it is to trust in the Lord. Man cannot teach you how to trust in the Lord. That's right, man. The way you and I learn how to trust in the Lord is from you and I walking That's right. That's right. with the Amen. Lord. You're right. And I got to thinking about that and I read a story some years ago about a man and uh, he walked what was called a tightrope and he was real good at it. And he tied one end off on one side of Niagara Falls. And he pulled the rope across and he tied the other side off on the other side. And he began walking back and forth across this tightrope. And as he was walking back and forth above Niagara Falls on this tightrope, a man came over on one side of Niagara Falls and standing there looking at that man walking 
on that tightrope above Niagara Falls. The man on the tightrope came over where the man was leaning on one side looking up at that man. And the man on the ground said, Sir, I ain't never seen anybody be able to walk on a tightrope like that. That's amazing that you can walk on a tightrope above Niagara Falls. And the man on the tightrope looked down on the man on the ground. And he said, Sir, do you think I could get a wheelbarrow? Put it up on this tightrope to walk across Niagara Falls. The man on the ground looking up at the man on the tightrope said, Sir, I've never seen anybody be able to walk a tightrope like that. Why, sure, you probably could get a wheelbarrow and walk across pushing a wheelbarrow on that tightrope. The man on the tightrope grabbed the wheelbarrow, set it up on the tightrope, and began pushing it across that tightrope above Niagara Falls. Here directly, he came back over where the man was standing on the ground, looking up in awe and amazement at that fella pushing that wheelbarrow. The man on the tightrope looked out at the man on the ground and said, Sir, you think I could get somebody, put them in the wheelbarrow, and push them across Niagara Falls on this tightrope? The man on the ground looking up said, Sir, I've never seen anybody be able to walk a tightrope like that. I've never seen anybody be able to push a wheelbarrow across the tightrope like that. Why, sure, I believe you could get somebody. Put him in the wheelbarrow and walk across Niagara Falls. The man on the tightrope looked down at the man on the ground. He said, get in the wheelbarrow. And immediately, the man began backpedaling. Uh -huh. I got to thinking about that. Come on, Caleb. And how did we come to the house of God? Come on now. And we'll stand and raise our hands to heaven. Yeah. We'll testify of how we trust God. We'll say, I trust God. Yeah. We testify of that. I do. Right. You do. Yeah. Us as children of God will stand and say, Oh, I trust the Lord. Yeah. Bless but you. sometimes the Lord will say, Get in the wheelbarrow. Uh, right. Come on now. Now, right. to get in the wheelbarrow means that you are taking your control uh -huh. and you're giving it to the one pushing the right. yeah. There's a lot of times in my life where God has asked me to get in a wheelbarrow. Amen. Now I know that's a simple illustration, but you get what I'm talking about. There will be times in your life that you may not know what's going on around you. And God may come and He may ask you, hey, I want to teach you some things on about trusting me. And I need you to get in the wheelbarrow. I don't know maybe what it is in your life that God got you in a wheelbarrow maybe right now. Maybe He's asking you to get in a wheelbarrow. But I'm telling you, the same God that's asking you to get in the wheelbarrow is the same God pushing the wheelbarrow. Right. He ain't going to let you out. He ain't going to let you fall right. when you put your trust in Him. There's other things that we could mention this morning about this education in our walk, this learning in our walk, what He'll teach you and I. But I'm glad this morning in our walking with Him, He'll teach you and I what it is to trust Him. That's right. This morning, if He's asking you to get in a wheelbarrow, That's good, I encourage you this morning to obey the Lord. Yes. Amen. Because He'll teach you these things that no man can teach you. That's right. Something else I got to thinking about in this walking with Him. Not only do we see it's an enjoyable walk, not only do we see it's an educational walk, but I got to thinking about the Bible says in verse 24, did it walk with God and He was not. I got to thinking about this walking with God. It'll become an evaporating walk. Yeah. I'll ask you this morning, in your walking with God, and in my walking with God, who does man see? Uh -huh. yeah, good question. That's good. Do they see you 
Or do they see the one that you're walking with? Now, we're living in a day of third job. That fellow by the name of Diotrephes. The Bible says that he loved the preeminence. What that means is he wanted to be in the spotlight. Yeah. What that means is he wanted all of the attention. Yeah. But you and I, we shouldn't get none of the attention. That's right. The attention should not be on nobody but the Lord. Yeah. Our attention should all be focused on Him. Yeah. And in our walking with God, if you and I, if you and I are the ones that's the only thing being seen and not the one we're walking with, yeah. that's a shame. Sure, God help you and I that the one we're walking with be seen. Now you say, Brother Caleb, God, how can we see God? The Bible says that God is a spirit. And I understand that. So how? How can we can we show the one we're walking with? Well, it's the fruit of the Spirit. That's right. It's the love, joy, peace. That's right. It's Christ in us being manifested out of us. Yes. That's right. And so in your walking with God, it's being seen of Him working in you and I. That's right. I'm glad that there's people that I've met in my life that when I look at them, they have given me a hunger. They've given me a desire yeah. to want to get closer to the Lord yeah. and my walking with Him. That's right. And so, I'll ask you this morning, are you disappearing in your walk? Are you getting out of the way? Are you decreasing in your walk? We find over there in the book of John, the Lord Jesus said, If I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. Right. We find John the Baptist said in John chapter number 3, verse number 30, said he must increase, but I must decrease. Right. In the day in which we live, we have lost yeah. the ministry of decreasing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You and I should learn to get out of the way. Right. You and I should learn to get low and lift him up so that man see him and not us. So this morning, in your walking with Him, who's being seen? So often, if we're not careful, we'll be the one seen and not the one we're walking with. Yeah. But did you know this morning, I can't put a home back together. Come on, now. Did you know this morning, I can't take somebody that's on drugs and alcohol and clean them up with nowhere to start. I can't take somebody that's never been born again and birth them into the family of God. I can't do that. I wouldn't know where to start. That's right. But the one I'm walking with, he can do all of it. Yeah. So why would you and I want to be seen and not the one we're walking with? That's good. When the one we're walking with can change people's lives. Yeah. When the one we're walking with could take somebody that don't know what it is to know the Lord and burst them into the family of God. What a blessing this morning that He allows you and I yeah. to walk with Him. Yeah. Who are you walking with this morning? That's good, Caleb. Who am I walking with this morning? If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord, I encourage you this morning to get born again. If God is dealing with you, I encourage you this morning to obey that tugging of the Lord. Right. What a blessing this morning that you and I can walk with Him. Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you this morning. Lord, I've tried my best to obey you. Lord, we won't be sensitive to what you've asked us to do. God, I pray, Lord, that Lord, you would help us this morning. Lord, to realize that, Lord, without you we can do nothing. Lord, there may be someone sitting here this morning and they've never been able to have that opportunity of walking with you because they've never been born again. God, I pray, Lord, that this morning you would deal with their heart. Lord, plant that seed. Lord, do that which man cannot do. 
Lord, I pray that you'll help us as children of God, Lord, to have a, a desire, Lord, have a hunger to want to walk with you better. Lord, I know there's men and women in this building, Lord, that walk with you. But Lord, every one of us this morning can do better. Ain't none of us where we need to be. Lord, we can all get closer to you. Lord, I pray that you'd be the main part of this service. Lord, thank you for the liberty that you've given us this morning. Lord, we'll give you all the honor and all the glory. For it's in your name we pray. Amen, amen. If you need to come to the altar and talk to the Lord, you come ahead. If, hey, maybe you've already been born again and you've been walking with the Lord. But maybe it would be good to come down and talk to the Lord and just say, Lord, I want to thank you for allowing me to walk.